greetings. It is uh, January 12th, 2018. I'm going to uh, read the uh, text of an op-ed I had penned that was published this past September 13th, 2017 in the Columbia, Missourian, in Columbia, Missouri, I guess, commentary, drowning out the silence of America's gun war. And then I'm going to uh, just briefly show a uh, recent drawing from my sites in the Human Rights Art Series. Drowning out the silence of America's gun war, Akiva Kenny Segan guest commentary. Born in 1950 and a high school student during the pivotal growth years of the Vietnam War, I remember tens of thousands of Americans demonstrating against that war in the mid to late 1960s and early 1970s. I protested. During Johnson's presidency, thousands chanted, hey, hey, LBJ, how many kids did you kill today? Over one and a half million Vietnamese died in the war. 58,000 American soldiers died and some American civilians too. I have a dream, that's an exclamation marks. Today, millions of Americans recognize those words spoken by Martin Luther King Jr. at the March on Washington in 1963. On April 4th, 1967, King came out strongly against the war in a landmark speech at Riverside Church in New York City. A year later to the day, King was felled by a terrorist, an assailant shooter. Just two months later, Democratic Party presidential candidate Robert Bobby Kennedy was assassinated. Then moving into the lead, he had campaigned with a pledge to end the war. Had he not been shot to death, I remain convinced he would have likely worked to end the war soon after. Winning presidential candidate Richard Nixon needlessly dragged the war on for years. In 2007, the nation witnessed the Virginia Tech massacre, a terrorist shooting in Blacksburg, Virginia, 32 victims died, including a 76-year-old Jewish Romanian-born Holocaust survivor. The next year, I was floored on reading a New York Times editorial page column by Bob Herbert. He wrote that since 1968, over one million Americans had died in the midst of NRA-propelled gun rights violence that slaughter of a genocidal level and a public health crisis of a catastrophic level far greater than AIDS. And far more victims are wounded than slain, many catastrophically. One million deaths by firearms that's etched itself into my consciousness. With about 34,000 Americans shot dead every year, the number of victims since 1968 now totals about 1,350,000 or more victims of our gun-driven genocide and terrorism, commensurate with the number of Vietnamese who died in the war. I have a dream. My dream is tens of thousands of now older, middle-aged anti-Vietnam War demonstrators are joined by their children and grandchildren. And tens of thousands of pro-life pro-infant, pro-child, pro-youth, pro-adult, pro-disabled, pro-senior, pro-elderly, and pro-family Americans will march in large demonstrations in cities around the U.S. We will chant, hey, hey, NRA, how many kids did you kill today? Back to earth from my dream, I accept that the pro-life, pro-child, pro-family, common-sense gun legislation lobby remains hobbled and shackled by a mishmash of diverse groups around the U.S. Each lacks the instant name recognition of the NRA. The executives of the national organizations each believe their group's mission is the holy grail for ending the slaughter. Yet the reality tells us otherwise, and I offer myself as an example. Quote, I ask myself, what are the names of any national common sense gun legislation groups? End of quote. Two come to mind, problematic itself. The Brady Campaign and Every Town for Gun Safety. Yet I know that if I were to ask each of my neighbors on the floor of the apartment building I lived in, what are the names of the national anti-gun groups? I would likely get, 
quote, I don't know, end of quote, from nearly everyone. So until pro-life, anti-gun Americans join together under one national organization, offering a heavyweight political counterpart to the NRA and their membership, Congress will do nothing. That should change. What's the alternative? The status quo, sorry. That means that in the days, weeks, months, and years ahead, Americans can expect new shocking and hand-wringing news of mass shooting terror attacks. Nowhere is safe. Schools, work sites, colleges, fast food places, movie theaters, airports, ferries, train stations. Most mass shooting attacks will not be perpetrated by Muslim extremists, but by American-born white males of Christian faith or background. The Vietnam War led Americans to protest, while Americans' gun war leads to silence. It's a silence that should be drowned out by deafening roars. I have no doubt where Bobby Kennedy, Jesus, or Martin Luther King Jr. would stand on the divide of gun rights versus the daily bloodshed. I'm reminded of this famous 1960s Bob Dylan song lyric from Blowing in the Wind. How many deaths will it take till he knows that too many people have died? And then it uh, concludes with a uh, just a sentence blurb about who I am. Kiva Kenny Segan is a former Columbia resident who taught at Columbia Public Schools, MU, and Stevens College, and now lives in Seattle. Actually, the teaching, uh, yeah, I was a Columbia resident actually back in the late 1970s. The teaching I did uh, in Columbia Public Schools at MU and Stevens College has actually been in uh, more recent years, uh, on, uh, teaching trips in 1996, 1997, 1998, and 2006. The uh, Sightseeing with Dignity Series drawing number 27, uh, Christina Kelly, born on September 11, 2001, slain in a, a mass shooting attack at, at a supermarket parking lot in Arizona. Thank you for listening.